afternoon and happy 2023. Um, pretty embarrassing that I'm saying that right now because it is the 1st of February. So a whole month has gone by. Not one vlog has been posted, so that's exciting. But I'll explain why. I thought that I would just start off this video with just a few things that, um, you know, I've been doing. You know, just a little part of my everyday life going to the gym. I just joined a new gym, um, doing some spin classes. Um, I'm going to have a grocery haul in here. Um, I decided to get me my favorite drink from Starbucks right now. I feel like it changes every week. Um, so right now, I've really been enjoying just a cold brew with a pump of chai and vanilla sweet cream cold foam on top. So that's what I'm sipping on today. And I'm going to talk about hello. Um, the things that you might have saw as the title of this in the title of this video. So I just figured that we would have a coffee talk. Coffee talkie in the car. That's so fucking stupid. Yeah, I'm not saying that. For starters, um, I guess I'll start with 2023 goals, okay? Um, something that I wanted to talk about in January. So one of my goals was, this kind of all ties in together. One of my goals for 2023 was, you know, I really wanted to get back into YouTube, vlogging, growing my business, doing all that stuff. I mean, I love to film. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I actually did have something filmed about what I'm about to talk about, um, but it was kind of all over the place and I was still like in a place where I wasn't like really okay. Um, so I thought that, you know, I went back and watched it and it's not that I was, I thought I was like embarrassed of anything I was saying. It was more so that it just could have been put together a little bit better. And again, I hadn't really finished grieving. So I decided to come on here and talk about it and try to make it pretty brief. But, um, the end of December, 2022 wasn't the easiest for me, um, or my family, um, on the 29th. Um, I know I had recently just posted about in our last video that we had gotten a new kitty cat. Her name was Pancakes. On the 29th, um, she did pass away and she was hit by a car and I mean, it was devastating for all of us. It's still devastating. Um, you know, obviously like losing a pet is really, really difficult. So I had literally come on here and talked like three days after and it was just a really hard time for me. I feel like I hadn't fully processed my thoughts um, and my emotions and anyone who's lost an animal um, knows the pain that comes with it. And so I wound up going back to therapy for a number of different reasons. Um, I started with that, you know, I started my first session back with, um, you know, I'm really struggling with my thoughts. I'm really struggling with obviously everything that's going on. Um, everything that happened with her passing, but also I was really, really struggling the most with the way that I was grieving. And that is what I want to talk about here because it really, really helped me. And, you know, this could be just like common knowledge for anyone else, but if it's not, you know, I'd like to bring it up and, um, you know, maybe it'll make someone feel a little bit better. But basically, in short, the way I grieve is completely different from anyone else in my family, really. Um, I've lost animals before. And when they pass away, I don't want to see any, anything of theirs. I don't want to see their food bowl, their water bowl, their litter box, their toys. I don't want to see any of it because it is too painful for me. Whereas I have friends who are completely opposite and want to see those things. Um, or like, you know, my family has no problem seeing those things. And then um, for me, I am like very <laughs> visible, I guess is the best word I can come that comes to mind, visible with my, um, I'm very public. That's the word. I'm very public with my emotions. I mean, as soon as I found out, I just broke down and just like, I feel like I violently sobbed. Like I was just absolutely just gutted. Um Whereas my brother, you know, goes in his room and lets it out and doesn't show it. And, you know, same as like my mom, like she, you know, had her moment in her room and my dad doesn't. It's, it's just everyone is very different. And I was struggling 
really badly with the fact that I felt like I was being cold hearted with the fact that I didn't want to see any of her things. I didn't want to see the ornament she played with. I didn't want to see even a morsel of food on the ground. Like if, I, if, and when, cause I wound up, there was a piece of food on the ground and her ornament that she played with. But then those last two things were there and I just absolutely just freaking killed me. Like it was really, really, it was really difficult for me to do. Usually at the end of the year, I like to post like something exciting that happened each month of that year on my Instagram story. And I couldn't even do that because I couldn't even look at photos of her. If I went back and saw photos, it was just, I was going to lose it. I was at work at the time and I really didn't want to have to like break down at work, even though I did anyway, you know, it's just, I was really struggling with the way that I was grieving in short. I feel like I'm back all over the place, but that's something that I went and talked with my therapist about. I was like, I feel like just so cold hearted. Like this is like, just not, I feel like I should be wanting to look at her things. And I feel like seeing her photo should make me smile and all those things. And I'm just like, I just don't understand why. And being as someone who has lived with intrusive thoughts her entire life, you know, when one thought leads to another and then it just makes you start to feel that you're just this psychopath and you know, that's for another time. The intrusive thoughts is for another video that I would like to talk about one day. But for now, this is what I'm going to just leave it at. And, you know, in short, she was very, very helpful um, with, you know, explaining to me that like everyone's grief. Yes, it is very different. And that's OK, because grief at the end of the day comes from a place of love, no matter what. And when she said that, that I don't know. It just, it just, I felt like a lot of, I felt relief. I loved that cat so much, you know, and we only had her for 14 months, but just, you know, the love that an animal brings and gives is just unlike any other kind of love. It's unconditional. Um, it's just, it's selfless. It's, I mean, as, as a pet owner, you literally bring in this animal knowing they're going to go before you and you still do it so that they can have the most beautiful life possible. And that I think is the most selfless thing that we can do as humans, period. So that's basically what I was trying to get at in the last video that I was trying to post and then I just wound up just I was like this is all over the place it's like 30 minutes long I don't know what I'm saying I'm trying not to cry um and not that I don't want to be transparent on here because I do but I also want to get a point across without it being super super long so um you know if anyone struggles with the way that they grieve again this could be so like like duh Veronica like everyone knows that but you know at the time I didn't and it's something I needed to hear and I really hope that I'm able to um you know, help someone with that. The good news is she's back home with us. She's buried in our backyard. Um, and you know, she's out there and she's, she's where she belongs. She's outside where she loved to be and she's home. So that's all that matters. <laughs> I say it all the time for someone who likes to vlog. I'm a terrible, like Henry terrible, like speaker. Like I, I feel like I get the words in my head and I just don't know how to put them out or say them. Like it's, it's very hard for me to do that because I'm just not very good with words, I guess. So um, the fact that I'm even vlogging is pretty brave of me. <laughs> so the second thing I wanted to kind of talk about were some goals that I had for 2023. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but just some things that I'd like to look back on as the year goes on to see, hey, did I hit them? Where am I at with this? Um, so I'm really excited about it. So I usually have it in my planner. I didn't bring it with me because I feel like the main ones that I want to talk about are on the top of my head. Um, so for starters, um, I am a new grad nurse. I hate to say new grad because there have been students who have graduated after me. I just still feel very new. But I have been working um, as a NICU nurse for eight months now almost. Um, so I graduated in June of 2022. Um, you know, before I went back to school, I moved back in with my parents because it was going to be financially really difficult for me to live on my own and, um, you know, be in school. It just, it wasn't possible really. Um, so now, I mean, I've been working for eight months now and I am ready to, you know, be on my own again. So this year has been a big 
well, one of my biggest goals is to be able to potentially put a down payment on a house. So that's something that I've been really excited about. I've been budgeting everything. I've just been nickeling and diming everything, like just really, really trying so hard to make sure that I am living within my means, but also like enjoying life and doing things I want to do and buying things that I want. Um, but being frugal at the same time. So that's like my big, big goal. Um, ideally, I've told a few people this, but I would love to have like a house by the end of the year and have a Christmas party. That's a stretch, but we'll, you know, that's something that we'll, we're going to work towards. We're going to do our best. So, so my second and third goals, I'm saying, because they kind of like, I'm kind of putting them together because they kind of tie in together is for starters, obviously, I really want to build my personal training business. I've been wanting to do that since before. Um, nursing school. I got my certification a few months before I started. And then I had a few clients and even had a few clients during COVID. But then like as school got harder, I was just like, I'm, I'm just not doing this. Like, you know, with COVID, like the gyms were closing, they were reopening. It was ridiculous. And so I was like, I just need to focus on school and I'll finish this later. So that's like a big goal of mine. I really want to start like filming, um, some things and finally make a website and maybe just like make programs that people can just purchase not for like expensive but just here's a program here's how to do it click it go to the gym you know how to do it easy you know and obviously if people want to work with me in the gym I'm happy to do that too um so for anyone who lives in the area and knows me personally or doesn't and is passing this on along to someone else like I'm happy to go in the gym with you or go to your home and teach you whatever you have at home you know like I'm I'm willing. I'm, I'm flexible. So that's a big thing that I'm trying to, um, that I'm trying to achieve. And also with that, I'm trying to achieve my own fitness goals. And I feel like with like, I feel like these last three years with school, like, I feel like I was still eating like healthy, but I wasn't really paying attention to like how much I was eating. And of course, like with wanting to hit certain, certain like physique goals or fitness goals, you have to eat. And I just wasn't eating that much. I was just eating to eat, I guess you could say. So this year I'm really trying to prioritize, like really increasing the volume of my meals, um, really increasing my protein at the same time, trying to be as clean as possible with it. Um, and with that, I mean, I, I joined a new gym, um, which is some footage that I have at the beginning of this clip, um, of this video. And I've been really enjoying it. Absolutely love it. It's a gym that is um, from the same organization as my job. So I get a pretty hefty discount with it. And it's it's just amazing. Um, so I'm, I'm really loving it so far. And I'm, I'm more motivated than ever to get into the gym. So um, those are two things that I'm really looking forward to trying to achieve um, this year when it comes to fitness and nutrition. And then lastly, this is kind of like weird for me to talk about, but I'm trying to be as raw and honest as possible because I know that there are probably some other, you know, 30 year old girlies who are struggling with this as well, but I am trying so hard to get back into the dating pool. Um, I, you know, kind of stopped dating in the middle of nursing school and was like, okay, um, I guess I need to just focus on school because this degree is more important to me than anything in the world at this moment. So that's what I did. I focused and, you know, last year it was an easier semester, but I still had to make sure I was graduating. I wanted to make Dean's List. That was a huge goal of mine last year that I was able to finally achieve. And, you know, I did that. And then right after it was, hey, you have to study for the NCLEX and then you pass the NCLEX and then immediately you start work. And, it's, it was just a lot. So I feel like, you know, I have a few months under my belt of work and I feel like I have nothing to study for. I am just like living my life as a working girly and dating is terrifying for me. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, it's really hard getting your heart broken. Um, it's really hard at the, well, it's really hard at the beginning for me to like get started because it's so foreign to me because I've just, it's something I don't do often. Um, and not that I didn't have any interest in it. It was more so that I just, things were busy for me. And then if I were dating someone, like it just didn't work out. And so I took a little break and now I feel like 
I'm ready, but I'm also like terrified y'all. Like this is, I can't even believe I'm talking about this in public. I mean, that's if anyone even watches this, but you know, it's a goal of mine is I want to get married and have a family. Like it's something that I really want for my life. And, but you know, there's other things I want to do, but also, you know, that's, that's something that's really important to me. And the goal or the motto for 2023 really is to get uncomfortable. Um, I told myself that last year and then I didn't do it because I just didn't. And, you know, maybe to my defense, I was busy with school and trying to become a nurse and all those things. But, um, you know, I saw a quote. It was like a, an Instagram reel um, at the end of 2022. And it was like, your 2023 will be exactly like 2022 if you don't get uncomfortable. And I was like, hmm, okay. Touche. So I have been living by that and I've been really just trying my hardest to do things that, you know, are making me uncomfortable right now, but I know later down the line, it'll be worth it, you know? So y'all wish me luck guys. But that's another thing that I do want to kind of mention before I move on to my last goal, um, is, you know, I'm not going to lie at all whatsoever. Being single at 31 years old is, is pretty difficult. And I, you know, it's, you know, they, they say not to worry about your timeline and I'm trying very hard to be happy with where I am in life. And, you know, God, God has this plan for me and I have to accept it and I am accepting it little by little, but I, I, I have my moments, you know, it, it's hard. It, it's, it's difficult to, you know, you have these, you have these dreams for yourself and then you don't hit those expectations and it's, it's hard and you see like the world out there is like engaged, getting married, having kids, all things that you want to do. And it just hasn't happened for you yet. But, you know, I so strongly believe that even as badly as this is something that I wish could have happened for me already, I am exactly where I need to be right now. I'm really, really trying hard to just be happy with where I'm at and be thankful for, you know, another day and be thankful that I'm even here someplace that I didn't think I'd be a few years back, you know, like getting rejected from nursing school the first time. And like, here I am working in my dream unit as my very, very first nursing job. Like that's huge. Um, it's okay that I'm 31 years old, you know, it's like, it just means that I had other things to do before, you know, before this happened for me. And I don't regret a single part of my life. Like being in college for 12 years. Yeah, that was freaking ridiculous. But I made so many friends from so from every single college I went to, you know, um, I, I learned so much, you know, I, it's, it's just, that's just the way that it is. I feel like for so long I was like dating these guys and like just immediately thinking like, well, I hope I like their house because this is the house that I'm going to have to live in. And, you know, I hope I like his lifestyle because this is the lifestyle I'm going to have to have. And I feel like I'm, I've finally, praise God, finally reached this era and this mindset where I'm just like, like, no, I can build my house and have my own lifestyle. And, you know, I don't have to fit into someone else's life. And I hope that we are able to just like match each other perfectly. And both of our lives just like, you know, mesh so perfectly, you know, instead of feeling like I just have to change who I am and my whole lifestyle for someone else. And I think that's a really powerful mindset to have. Um, and I have to give a shout out to one of my best friends, moms, for really putting that mindset um, in my brain. And lastly, I guess this could have tied into my um, fitness goals, but um, you probably saw that, you know, I, you know, do spin classes and I really enjoy it. I've been doing it for a little over a year now. And at the end of the year, I was really, really motivated. I was going often um, like four times a week and I was training to become a spin instructor. And then the end of the year just got really hard. We got some really rough, um, really like devastating news in my family. And then with pancakes passing away. And then in January, I just like felt like I was going down this like depressive episode that I needed to get myself back out of. And, you know, it just, a lot of things got put on the back burner. One of them being wanting to post two YouTube videos, um, a month and it's February 1st. I haven't posted anything. So 
just bear with me. So I'm going to try to this month start that back up again, start going back again four times a week. I'm really trying to increase my endurance. When I went for an audition back in November, um, what the feedback they had told me was, you know, make try to like get your cardiovascular strength up a bit. So that's something I really need to work on, but it's a goal that I'm really hopeful for. And I think I can do it if I practice. So anyway, that's all. That's my little coffee talk. I didn't take a single sip of my coffee because I was just chatting away. Um, but I just wanted to go ahead and, um, you know, talk about all that. This weekend is my best friend's wedding, which will be a YouTube video. Um, and that's going to be the only content of that video. I'm going to be very excited to film every, every part of this weekend. You know, we have the rehearsal dinner tomorrow and then Friday we're going to hang out, um, at a bar by a fire. And then we're sleeping at her house me and her other best friend were sleeping there. It's going to be like old times. And then Saturday is the wedding. So it's going to be fun. So, um, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video. starters, just rouses. Um, I got this Chobani coffee creamer, peppermint mocha. Nikki got me addicted to it and the ingredients are really natural and clean on that. I got two boxes of, let's see, dark chocolate Kodiak cakes for my breakfast because I go through them. And then Whole Foods didn't have the root beer Olipop, but... Rouse's did. So I got one of those because I already have a couple in the fridge. So that's Rouse's. So then I went to Whole Foods. I'm actually going backwards, but I've got some broccoli that I'm going to have with my pod. Got some avocado oil spray because we have Pam in the house and I'm trying to be a little bit cleaner. So I went ahead and got that. I got a bunch of turkey chopsticks for work because I get hungry before I go eat during my shift. So I got a couple of those. I went ahead and got some turkey burgers. So the ingredients for those are very clean as well. I got some of that. I went ahead and got some more. They didn't have coconut oil, which I was sad about, but I went ahead and got olive oil instead. And then I got two jars of the crunchy almond butter because it's almonds and sea salt and it's like the cheapest one I can find and I love it. And then I got three RX bars. I got chocolate raspberry, blueberry, and then chocolate sea salt. And then let me put this all back and then I'll show Whole Foods. Okay, so from Whole Foods, I got some cod fillets. That would be like my main meal. I also got some shrimp because it was on sale. And I really went back and forth, but they look delicious. So I think I'm going to cook those tonight with some coconut aminos. Got a bag of sweet potatoes. And then my snack pack, Lesser Evil, popcorn. I love them. I eat those at work at like 3 in the morning. Um, and then I'm trying to do protein shakes again. So I decided to try this oat milk because those ingredients are pretty clean. I'm really, really, really trying to go clean this year or cleaner. Got some trimmed green beans, and then I got two of the vintage cola olipops. So that's my grocery haul, and I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking. 